Hi, it's Dwyer. It is Monday, September 2nd, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's quickly talk NFL football, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, no doubt many of you have done a lot of research, um, have even been involved in fantasy football pools already, uh, already have your action in for week one of the National Football League. Now, let's pick the best long shot on the board. In other words, this team is not going to be the favorite in whatever publications or websites you've been on. I'm not going to reveal my methodology because we all have trade secrets, right? But in my eyes, based on my analysis, the best risk reward on the board in NFL futures is the 40 to 1. In some books, it's 45 to 1 that you're getting right now on the Cleveland Browns. Right, folks? This is a team that made the playoffs last year. This is a dangerous team in a very tough, dare I say, the toughest division in football. Right? They have one of the best backs in football. He's injured. He's going to be out for at least the first month. They have a quarterback who wasn't how he portrayed himself to the public as. Right? We recognize that. But he's immensely talented. The front seven on the defense is absolutely ferocious. The secondary is one of the best in the National Football League. They have the defensive side of the ledger figured out. Right? I think the Browns, at these odds will put you in the catbird seat. Understand, you don't need the Browns to win the division. What you need on a futures bet that you can hedge is for the Browns to be in contention to make the playoffs in early December. Let's pivot here. Browns are going to be immediately tested. Week 1, Let's throw out a couple of spread picks for week one. The Dallas Cowboys come to Cleveland. Right, Dallas, of course, has taken care of CeeDee Lamb. He's in the fold. Cleveland is the favorite. Now think about that for a moment. Right, how can Cleveland be going off at 40 to 1 in the futures market? and yet be favored week one against the Dallas Cowboys. Right? Think about that. Cleveland's the favorite. You need to shop around. The line I like is Cleveland laying three points at home against the Dallas Cowboys. Right? Cleveland laying three points at home against the Dallas Cowboys. If that line creeps above three, and I've seen it as high as three and a half, then you need to bet an alternative line. I don't like going above three in competitive games. You need to bet the alternative line of Cleveland laying three against the Dallas Cowboys. You should get that play at a minus 130 or lower. The next bet, folks, I, I need for people to look on the calendar and realize that it is September. Think in terms of team speed. Think in terms of a warm weather team being at home, an explosive offense being at home, right? When it's hot, when the opposition might actually wilt from the heat alone. Couple that with, in my opinion, one of the best coaches in the National Football League. Now, let me say both of these guys get my respect, both coaches. Right, But understand, the home coach is going to be in, in his element. right? At home, hot weather. 
I like the Miami Dolphins laying three points at home over the Jacksonville Jaguars. Right? I'm not the biggest fan of Trevor Lawrence. I simply am not. I'm surprised this line got made. The league will catch up with Miami later in the year. Miami's going to show problems operating in cold weather later in the year. Right? But right now, with this level of team speed, at home, I think it's going to be too much for Jacksonville. I like Miami laying three points at home over the Jags. That's how I see it week one. Let me hear from you. Um, just a few further things too. I believe the team to beat in the NFC is not Detroit. Let's see how Detroit does this week. It's not Detroit. It's not Philly, a team that fell apart the second half of last year. Now, I believe the team to beat in the NFC is the same team who won the NFC last year, the San Francisco 49ers, folks. They have or are on the verge of re-signing Brandon Ayuk. If you look at the numbers... Not the body language, not the built-in biases we have. Football fans love first-round picks. We love a guy who looks like an Adonis who can throw the ball all over the field. We're looking for the big man on campus, not the guy who comes across as the finicky Felix Unger. Right? But Brock Purdy would have won the NFL's MVP last year, in my opinion, if on Christmas Day, that late in the season last year, if on Christmas Day, he just would have matched Lamar Jackson, right? As it was, understand going head-to-head -head with Andy Reid and Pat Mahomes. The last time Brock Purdy was on the field, in a game that counted, not a preseason game. He left the field in overtime with the lead in the Super Bowl against the Kansas City Chiefs. Right? To me, the Niners are looking at years of success. They have the quarterback. The roster is ridiculously deep. For those of you in a fantasy pool, in the comment section of this YouTube video, Tell us where in the first round, because that's where it happened. <clears throat> People in your fantasy pool pick Christian McCaffrey. Right? You add that in with Ayuk. You add that in with Debo Samuels. You think of Bosa on the defensive side of the football. You think of the Niner D. And then you think of the layup games they're going to have. Right? Two games against Seattle. Folks, Pete Carroll's no longer there. Two games against Arizona. Right? I'll agree. The Rams can be dangerous. Puka Nakua is injured right now, and it's a knee injury. Right? You and I know that knee injuries in September can turn out to be lingering injuries where the guy is never a hundred percent all year how do you hide your knee right it'd be different if it's a finger injury or something like that no this is a knee injury it's going to affect his speed it's going to affect how he gets downfield right let's just say too aaron donald is retired the rams might not be who they just were, right? So the Niners, with a manageable schedule, with a Goliath of a roster, and with the knowledge that, quite frankly, if they stop Pat Mahomes on fourth down in overtime of the Super Bowl, they'd be wearing rings right now, right? I think the Niners are going to be driven. Kyle Shanahan still has not won a ring as a head coach, right? Make no mistake, too. The Brandon Ayuk negotiations were a surrender. According to reports, the Niners, understanding where they are, they're on the cusp. 
ended up paying Ayuk something like $30 million. $30 million a year, right? Hell, if you're going to give the guy that much money, why not just surrender the minute the guy said, hey, I want a new deal? Now, they have an ongoing situation with Trent Williams, but understand how football is. Believe it or not, by doing the Brandon Ayuk deal, the Niners got cap relief early in that contract. So now they have a little bit more to deal with Trent Williams. I'm guessing this is going to be kind of like a Chris Jones situation with KC last year, where Williams might miss a game if he misses a game. Then the team will come to their senses, stop bluffing, and make him whole. Right? So the Niners, to me, are the best in the NFC. AFC's more clouded, isn't it? Joe Burrow was out for most of last year. He's back. Right? You want to look closely at that AFC North. Right? The problem with Kansas City is Travis Kelsey is older. The best unit for KC last year was actually its defense. Right? During your fantasy draft, let's just say after Kelsey went relatively early, not that early, but after he went relatively early, how long did it take for someone in your pool to pick a chief wide receiver? Probably several rounds, right? I'm guessing several running backs went off the board before someone picked Pacheco. Right now, I'll agree. Historically, beating Andy Reid in September is a big ask. Reid is a future Hall of Fame coach, right? Reid, when he has time, is a magician. Kansas City is a tough team to play because they're different than everyone else, right? Mahomes can throw the ball all over the field, and Mahomes isn't structured like Tom Brady, right? With Brady, a lot of the genius was the fact that Brady was consistent, not a lot of wiggle. With Pat Mahomes, he fades back in the pocket. You crash the pocket. Suddenly, Mahomes is off at the left. Mahomes is running around, buying time. Then Mahomes is throwing the ball. You aren't even certain if Mahomes is going to throw the ball overhand. Mahomes might throw the ball sidearm and stuff like that. This is an impossible quarterback to prepare for. Right? When you catch KC early in the season, it's very hard to beat them. But let's be real. We are a long way long way from when Mahomes had a superstar wide receiver in Tyreek Hill to throw the football to. Right? KC, I believe, organizationally has made a decision to invest more in defense, to change the makeup of their team away from the offensive juggernaut that it was. They're hoping that their guy, arguably the best football player, the best quarterback in the game, is going to find a way to make things work. Right? Skeptics will even make the claim, I'm one of them, that Travis Kelsey is not who he was. But that's hard to tell. After Kelsey, of course, looked magnificent in the playoffs last year when it mattered against the Ravens, right? I'm not sold that the AFC belongs to KC this year. Let me also point out, too, that three-peats, they seem more attainable than they are, right? Folks, no one in NFL history in the Super Bowl era has won three in a row. Right? There's a reason for that, especially in these modern times where guys say, hey, man, I've delivered for you. I've gotten us rings. Where's my reward? Where's my next contract? When too many guys 
line up outside the GM's office, you're going to have problems. Right? So I don't believe the AFC belongs to KC. Right? I'm a skeptic. When things look great on roster, on paper, but the team hasn't done it. Who knows what's going to happen now that Aaron Rodgers is healthy and again starting a season with the New York Jets, right? I'd like to see how Aaron copes through a year before I anoint the Jets. Let's face it too. Stefan Diggs is gone, right? Buffalo had what they wanted, didn't they? They were at home against Kansas City in the playoffs. Their time came in the playoffs last year. It was time to put up or shut up. They got shut up. Right, folks? I think spiritually it's very hard to come back from that. Right? You lost some key pieces. You lost at home to a KC team that, quite frankly, was lucky to make the playoffs. Let's be real, right? To get to the Super Bowl, Casey's on the road in both Buffalo and Baltimore, right? And, of course, you had a KC team whose offense was somewhat diminished, right? Look at the numbers from last year. Casey's offense was somewhat pedestrian, and you did not deliver, Right? You're going to have to come back from a lot of self-doubt. And I mean a lot of it. As for Baltimore, there's been some change, hasn't there? You have a new defensive coordinator. You have Derrick Henry now at running back after, curiously, curiously, wetting the bed by not even running the football that much against KC in a home game with that defense. What were you guys thinking? Coaching staff seems to have panicked in that playoff game, didn't they? Right first, how do you go through the first half unprepared for Travis Kelsey, who everyone knows about? I mean, isn't Kelsey the top option for Pat Mahomes? You let Kelsey have a great first half. Then you go through the second half, you're not running the ball. Right? So now you have Derrick Henry there. But you still have a problem, don't you? It's called Lamar Jackson in the playoffs. Folks, he has not delivered in the playoffs. He's the reverse, isn't he? Of a Tom Brady or a Pat Mahomes. Right? Those guys... Replay the Super Bowl. Replay just the overtime. It's a fourth down, folks. It's existential. And the announcers just acted like it was a foregone conclusion that Pat Mahomes was going to get the first down, which he did. Right? Folks, Lamar Jackson doesn't get the first down in the playoffs in situations like that. Right, let's just say Baltimore's promising. They're in a tough division. I believe the tough division <coughs> is going to help all of those teams. Because when they get done playing the Clevelands, the Cincinnati's, the Pittsburgh's, when the Ravens then play the other teams, they're going to feel like it's a preseason game. Let's face it, too. One of the truisms that gamblers go by is the fact that the NFC has a very hard time during the regular season beating Lamar Jackson. Look up those stats. So that's how I see it. To me, the best futures bet on the board from a risk-reward perspective. I, I feel the Niners are going to win the Super Bowl, but from a risk-reward perspective, hedging, it's the Cleveland Browns at at least 40-1 to one to win the whole thing. 
The games I like week one are Cleveland laying three points against the Dallas Cowboys. Cleveland's at home. And Miami at home laying three points against the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm still trying to figure out how Trevor Lawrence landed that big a contract. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comments section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.